All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Today, Alan Moore is going to be presenting 3D laser scanning. So just a little housekeeping before we get started. This webinar is being recorded, and all attendees will be in listen-only mode. We will also send the slide deck out to those of you that are joining us today. And if you have any questions, uh, please type them into the chat box, and I'll bring them up during the Q&A portion of this presentation. But first, I'd like to introduce our president of CDI Engineering Solutions, Mr. Steve Karlovic. He's going to talk a little bit about our company, and then he'll also introduce Alan. So with that, Steve, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Renee. Um, before we begin Alan's presentation, let me offer you an introduction to CDI Engineering Solutions. Uh, founded in 1950, CDI has grown over the past 70 years to be one of the largest engineering and design firms in the U.S., according to the Engineering News Record, where we place in the top 25 firms serving the energy, chemicals, and infrastructure markets, which are our specialty. We're a 650-person firm with the capability to take on large, complex projects with a well-developed and documented quality process and system to ensure that we meet our objective of quality results safely delivered. We have a network of 10 engineering offices in the U.S. to provide local responsiveness to our clients with an incredible team of engineers, architects, designers, project managers, and project support personnel who altogether have uh, more than eight years average with the company and more than 15 years of professional experience uh, on average, all of which can enable us to tackle projects from the smallest brownfield maintenance projects to $100 million, $200 million greenfield capital projects and large buildings. Next. Our, <clears throat> as I mentioned, we're a multidisciplinary firm and we have experts in virtually every engineering discipline ranging from electrical power instrumentation and controls to civil engineering. Our process engineers specialize in the chemical engineering that's unique to our refining and chemicals clients in many different chemicals markets. Our mechanical engineers are specialists in everything from piping and vessel design to HVAC systems. We have an architecture group that specializes in the design of industrial higher education and correctional facilities on a national basis. It's backed up by our building systems engineering team. Our civil department handle anything from site development on industrial sites and commercial sites to water and wastewater management product, projects. We've got a large transportation engineering team with highway, bridge, and airport specialists serving many state and local governments throughout the Mid-Atlantic region. And we've got the complementary capabilities in environmental, structural, geosciences, and geotechnical to support all these large transportation and industrial projects that our practice undertakes. Uh, our marine in engineering capabilities are really a unique specialty capability we have to design wharves and docks and conveyance systems to load and unload cargo ships from uh, rivers and in ports, mostly in support of our in large industrial clients. Uh, our geotechnical group has not only a uh, complete soils and concrete lab, they've got five drill rigs, and they specialize uh, as one of only two or three firms in the U.S. in doing density measurements and volume measurements on large bulk stockpiles of material. Backing up all these different disciplines are our support uh, service departments like procurement and supply chain management, project management, and 
the project services group that goes along with that, and our construction inspection and construction management groups that enable us to deliver full turnkey EPCM services. Next, Alan. Our 10 U.S. offices are located in the key market areas for the industry we serve, and they're backed up by offices offshore that enable us to produce economic advantages on larger projects thanks to lower engineering and design costs. But I'll say that um, if you're like me, the office environment is maybe less important these days. For the past six weeks, uh, I haven't been to any CDI office. And most of our uh, uh, engineers and designers are currently working from home. Uh, nearly all of them are doing that successfully since the uh, onset of the COVID epidemic. Uh, we've done that with a combination of uh, good computer systems and an excellent IT support team and a lot of willing employees that uh, got in front of this and made work from home a success to the point where we're seeing an overall uh, produ productivity improvement in some departments and uh, an overall level kind of productivity and our clients uh, are very satisfied with the results so far. So we're looking to see maybe a permanent change in the nature of uh, our office versus home work environment. Um, while we are working from home, I'll mention uh, a couple of interesting things. We're supporting a lot of community initiatives aimed at uh, helping the people most impacted by the pandemic. We're also applying our engineering skills uh, wherever we can. And in particular, we're making good project uh, progress on a project that we're doing on a pro bono basis along with ExxonMobil and Louisiana State University to identify alternative sources for respiratory ventilator filters. So our filtration experts are helping uh, identify these uh, options and determine which will be acceptable to source uh, for uh, the needs of ventilators. So next, on to the main topic of our webinar today. Let me introduce you to Alan Moore. Alan Moore is an engineering systems administrator in our Houston office. Um, uh, he's got an associate's degree in computer aided design technology from Lamar University in Beaumont, Texas. And uh, since he graduated from Lamar University, he's got 18 plus years of experience, primarily in the engineering procurement construction management uh, sector in serving the oil and gas industry, where he's been a piping designer and a CAD, a 3D CAD systems administrator, including being in that role uh, as a CAD systems administrator and as our senior uh, engineering system administrator at CDI for the past three years. So, uh, Alan, over to you for our, your talk today on three dimensional scanning. Thank you, Steve. Uh, yes, my name is Alan Moore. I'm the, uh, like Steve said, the Engineering Systems Administrator for the Texas Operations Group. Uh, I have experience, I'm um, subject matter expert in CAD Works and Pro, AutoCAD Plan 3D, Fagro Scene, and Autodesk Recap. So we are going to be talking about laser scanning today. Uh, our agenda is, uh, what is laser scanning? Uh, how and why is it used? Uh, we're going to do a little demo time uh, with uh, uh, Autodesk Recap and Autodesk Navisworks. And then we're also going to talk about how we at CDI can help you. Uh, at the end, we'll also have a uh, time for question and answers. Uh, so please feel free to uh, jot those down and put those in the comments section. Now, we will be talking more about the use of laser scanning in the industrial plant sectors, but this can also be used in the architectural infrastructure sectors also. So first things first, just in case you don't know, what is laser scanning? 
Well, think of it uh, as a tape measure that you, a laser tape measure that you can get from Lowe's uh, and Home Depot, but instead of pointing, uh, instead of measuring one point at a time, it measures millions of points per scan. Uh, everything that's in the line of sight of the scanner will be measured and can give you an accuracy of about one millimeter. Uh, these scans can last as little as two minutes or an hour, depending on how far and how much you want to uh, scan. Of course, the longer the scan, the more accurate and clear the scan will be. Uh, also, the more scans that we do, uh, the more that you're going to be able to see and measure. Um, so this scan right here, um, is a scan that we did for a client a couple months ago. It consists of about 65 different scans, uh, multiple elevations, uh, at least four different elevations that were shot in this slope, uh, scan, and it encompasses about 36,000 square feet, and it took us about three days to scan this job. Now, if you can imagine going out there uh, doing the old field uh, measurements and uh, verification, it would take you a lot more than three days to see what uh, everything is out there. So how do we do a job like this? Well, basically we start out with a plan, literally and figuratively. Uh, we take a plan drawing uh, and work with all the disciplines and mark up where we think we need a scan. So we have a plan before we even go out there to the field. Then, then once we move to the field, we walk the project out before we start scanning uh, to make sure that we have everything covered. We start placing our targets for dimensional control and we spray paint down on the ground to verify that this is where we're going to scan. Once we're done with that scan, we mark that one out so we don't come back and accidentally scan the same area twice. When the field work is done, this is when we take our raw scans that we've done in the field and register them in our uh, registration software. In the Houston office, we use a uh, Figaro scanner, so we use the Figaro scene software to do our registration and our QAQC. And then we also, in the West Virginia and Baton Rouge office, we use the ZNF laser uh, scanner, so we use the ZNF laser control. Um, this is where we stitch all the raw scans together to make one point cloud file. And we export that point cloud to the desired point, point cloud format. If you're using recap, that would be a recap RCS or an RC, uh, RCP file. If you're using LFM for your point cloud uh, viewing, uh, you would be uh, we would export that as an LFM or LFD file, or we can also do a generic E57 or other formats uh, that might be desired. Well, I threw out another term, point cloud. Uh, what is it? Well, uh, this is what you would use in your CAD programs uh, to do your design work. Uh, your design programs might, or your CAD programs might be, might include AutoCAD or Navisworks or Revit or any other uh, CAD programs that can bring in a point cloud. This allows you to see what is out there and be able to uh, do your design and engineering more effectively. So why is laser scan used? Uh, well, if you think of the old traditional uh, field measurements, after a while your tape measure can only stretch so far. And if you're stretching it across two uh, beams, you're going to get a little deflection in there no matter how tight you pull it, so your accuracy is about a quarter of an inch. Um, the point cloud is way more accurate than the tape measure. Uh, we can see exactly what is out there if the scanner saw it. So if the scanner can see it in the line of sight, it will pick up all the existing pipe and structure and cable trays, junction boxes and lights. Um, 
stuff that you might not sketch during your uh, field walk down. Also, we use it for scalability. Uh, multiple drafters and designers and engineers. If the job grows, the number of designers can grow with it without having any extra field trips. Have them look at the view, uh, have them view the scan instead of working, uh, instead of making another field trip. Example, we had a uh, job that the client came up and said that we were going, they were adding scope to the job and we were going to have to take a field trip to identify the field notes. Um, we were able to get into the scan, identify the area, mark it up for the designer, and so there was no field trip needed. And we didn't lose two days just to make sure that we had the right area. Uh, also, another reason we use it is safety. Uh, typically, a scan team is two people, uh, sometimes three. Uh, that can, uh, consists of a scanner and a surveyor. Uh, so there's less people that have to travel to the field, which means less chance of having a recordable or near-miss uh, incident. And then with also with the COVID-19, that also means that less people have a chance to get uh, infected uh, or get other people infected. We can go out there, we can scan the jobs, get the scan file to the designers and the engineers and they can continue working while everyone is shut down. Uh, another way that we use laser scanning is uh, in our CAD programs. This allows us to see our designs going to fit and if it's done correctly. Uh, stare, uh, as you can tell in this photograph right here, the stairs were modeled wrong. The model was not as wide as the original and the steps were not spaced correctly in the vertical. This can be fixed before the drawing is issued, which will save money uh, by fixing it now than in the field and having to uh, fix it in the field. Uh, also, not having to model all the existing structure and pipe and electrical will prevent us from using extra hours in your projects. Um, yeah. You can also bring in point clouds into Navisworks to see the existing uh, over the new model. This really helps in uh, model reviews. One other way that we can use the uh, laser scan is scanning the project uh, during installation for verification. Uh, we can scan the project as it's being constructed to verify that it's being erected correctly. So if something's off, we can fix it before another piece goes in and verify that it's done correctly. We also use our laser scan uh, for clashes. Uh, as long as, again, the laser scan can pick it up, we'll have a record of what's out there. And as we run our pipe, uh, we'll be able to know if we're clashing. Nothing is plumb and square in the real world. After years of settling or emergency maintenance work, uh, things are not nice and straight. Uh, so we can see the clash and make the changes before it goes to the field. Again, saving us, uh, more, saving you more money. Uh, another way that we use our laser scan is uh, in programs like Recap. Leads can uh, mark the scan up for where all the tie-in points are located so that the designer can find them and see them. Uh, when Once they're uh, created, then they can be exported out uh, in multiple formats like a CSV file or a text file that can be used in reports and actually import them into our CAD programs. Also, since the scanner takes a 360 degree photo every time that it scans, we can use these photos for demos uh, photos instead of making drawings to tell the field hey, we don't want this, demo this out. Just use the photograph uh, as our demo. Now, speaking of demo, now we're going to do a little bit of demo uh, over recap, and then we'll show a little bit uh, of using the laser scan inside of AutoCAD.
our inside Navis works. So this uh, let's see that's Navis that's Navis works. We won't show that one yet. This is recap. There we go. So this is our scan that we did uh, about two or three months ago, and that's 36,000 square feet. It took us three days to scan. Now this is a lot of data. Uh, it's kind of maybe a little hard to see. Uh, the scanner picks up everything, including the steam that was coming off the heaters at that day uh, because it was cold. So we can pare this down a little bit, make it a little smaller. And we will do that real quick. We'll turn off all these points. And now we have two areas that are uh, visible. We have one of the heaters here, and then we have a control station. Well, we just want to focus on the control station right now, so we will turn off the heater also. So then you can really see uh, just the area you want to focus on. Now, if you notice these little bubbles right here, these are locations of all the scans. And you can tell that we had multiple, we had four different layers. We had our ground scans. We had one level up on the first deck of the heaters. Then we had another level where these uh, on one set of heaters, and then a very top level of these heaters. Now the benefit about shooting all these different elevations is we get more and more more and more coverage. And so the laser will go out, can hit, come back to the scanner and measure, do another measurement. Now this is our area that I was talking about earlier that was added to our scope in the middle of the project. So we were able to um, pinpoint where our control station was going to be and where our time locations were. So I was able to go in here and tag each one of the tie-in points. So how do you do that? Well, if you go down to uh, our notes, uh, you can click on right there, and then you pick anywhere in your scan. And so we're going to pick right here, and we're going to call this tie point 32. You can add more information if you want to. You can actually add an image. If you've already taken a photograph or someone's taken a photograph uh, of that tie-in point, you can add that image to verify it's the right location. And then you hit OK. Now, Cancel that. Get out of that. Okay, so we have, like I said, we have a uh, each one of these spheres that you see is a real view. That that's where the scan uh, was taken at. And so you can click on the bubble view or the real view and go into that location. Let that load up. Okay, and so you can see the photograph that was used. Now this isn't just um, a photograph, it's actually incorporating the scan data in there also. And so you can, another thing that you can do inside a recap in most uh, scan programs like LFM is do measurements. So if you click on this measurement right here, this measurement tool, and let's say we want to see how far it is from our tie-in point 32 up to this um, T right here. Well, you can zoom in, pinpoint that area right there, and come up and go to our um, T right here. Now, we can eyeball it and say, yeah, that's pretty close. But with inside of Recap, you can also snap to the data, or you can snap to the center point of that um, that pipe. So if you go right here to pipe snap and come over to your uh, T, click 
click right there. Okay, we'll zoom out. Cancel that real quick. You can see that it put a green, you might be able to see it, it put a little green circle right there. That's the center of that pipe. And so we know that the elevation is, uh, or the distance is one foot three and an eighth from here to here, but the actual Z dimension It's a little hard to see, so let's go ahead and get back into our scan, rotate around a little bit, and there we go. Our Z dimension is uh, 1 foot 2 and 5 eighths. So we know our Z dimension, which is up, is 1 foot 2 and 5 eighths. It also gives us the XY if you need to know that also. Now, let's say that we're way over here in this scan and we're looking here and we're talking with someone and we say hey we need to go look at tie point 32. If you go down to your project navigator go to annotations there's our tie point 32 and we can click on this little uh, point right here and it will take us right back to that tie point. So as you give this to a designer and engineer and say the tie points are already annotated, they're already pinpointed in the model, then you'll be able to, they, they'll be able to go in there, click on this and go directly to that location. Now another good feature to have inside a recap is being able to reference in a Navisworks model. Let's, there we go. And so, just like you do in AutoCAD or um, Nevisworks, you can bring in another model. So this one here is the model that we're working on. This is our control station. There was some concern that this would be coming out too far into the walkway, but as you can tell, because we're overlaying the model with the uh, real uh, photograph, see that it does not come out as far as this one, so there's plenty of access way through this um, pipe rack. Also, you can see that our designer was standing there during the photo when the photo was taken by the scanner, and so he's a good one to see, you know, what location our uh, hand wheels are for our bypass and our control station. So that's a good reference. Now the one bad thing is right now you can't see this in real view. So if we go back to our scan view inside a recap, you just can't see it. But you can bring in the scan into our uh, Navisworks. And so when you're doing a model review, oh, we just lost it. Hold on a sec. Let me go back. I zoomed out too far. Get back in here. There we go. So when you're doing a model review, it's a good idea to go ahead and slice out the areas that you want, and that way you can verify that there's no interferences. Now, if we look closely in this area right here, come around, we know where our tie-in points because the designers put those tie-in points there. Here's our other tie-in point and you can see that we're hitting the center of that pipe and so we know exactly where to put it. So during model reviews this is extremely, extremely helpful. Now, uh, how can we at CDI help you? Well, we can uh, help you with your scan jobs, uh, whether we're doing the engineering work or not. Uh, we can come out there and come up with a plan and develop uh, our, you know, the, the site map uh, to do the scanning. Uh, we can also take the scan data and create an intelligent 3D as-built model 
or a digital twin of your uh, location, so that way we can tie in uh, another time. Uh, we can also provide training uh, and support on scanning or writing your CAD specs for like CADWorks in AutoCAD Plan 3D. Uh, and we can also help fine tune uh, your ISOs if you're having problems with that. Now, with that, I would like to uh, hand it back over to uh, Renee and see if we have any questions. All right. Thanks, Alan. We do have a few questions. Uh, the first one is, how far apart are the scans? Uh, typically, the way we like to scan is we like to do about 25, 30 feet apart. Uh, so that way we get good overlap and coverage. Again, the more coverage we have, the better the data will be and the more accurate the scan uh, measurements will be. Okay. Uh, how close do you have to be to an item to be able to scan it? Um, well, the, the, depending on the scanner and what resolution you choose, we, again, typically we don't like to go more than 20 or 25 to 30 feet away from something, but if if we have something that's way up on the tower, we can set the scanner to higher uh, resolution and actually be able to get that. Uh, the Faro scanner that we use is a Faro S uh, T, and it'll go 150 meters. And the uh, one that we use in West Virginia and Baton Rouge is a ZNF uh, 50. And I believe it'll go up to 300, 350 meters out. Okay. Um, how do you get the scan on the plant coordinates? Uh, well, typically we have a surveyor that comes out with us when we scan. That's the two-man team. And we put up targets uh, for scans. And typically we put up four, five, six targets per scan. And we shoot each one of those with the uh, total station. And that records, the total station records the X and Z once we know what the uh, plant coordinates are. And then we register scans, we bring that data in and it allows it to line up in plant coordinates. Or if you go back out at a later time and do more scanning, we can tie those scans in with the coordinates and see if anything is off. Okay, Alan, you were breaking up just a little bit there, so um, we have one more question and then, um, of course, we can follow up with anybody on this call if they have any other questions or follow up um, with Alan today. So the last question is, how big is a scan file? Uh, it just depends on uh, the, the scanner and how many scans we've taken. The, the one that I was showing that's about 65 scans with the Faro scanner, is about 37 gigs uh, for an RCP file. Uh, I've seen scans as large as 300 gigs because they've had, you know, three to 400 scans in them. So it really just depends on, you know, how many scans there is on the job. Uh, but so you have to have a, a good re, a good way to distribute it in for the designers and engineers. Okay. Well, I think that's all the questions that we have, uh, unless anybody has anything else. Um, in the meantime, Alan, do you have anything else that you wanted to cover for a wrap-up? Um, not really. Just uh, if you have um, any questions or would like uh, some more information, you can get a hold of uh, myself uh, in the Houston office or, or Kenny Dar uh, Darbone which is our VP of Business Development in the Baton Rouge office. And we can, uh, we have offices, uh, like I said, in, in the Houston, Beaumont area, uh, Baton Rouge, West Virginia, and uh, in, in the Pennsylvania office also. They can do laser scanning. All right. Thanks, Alan. And thanks, everybody. We appreciate you being here today. Like we said, we'll upload this to um, our YouTube channel and forward you all the slide deck. So thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again next time.